Dang, gamers. Nine seconds. Hey. Yeah. Hey. 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 Hey, Nan, I'm going to finish the sandwich, so why don't you introduce everyone to that? <laughs> sure, sure. Oh. Hello, and everyone, welcome to this latest episode of Good Morning Source Gaming, episode 44. I am Nantendrex, and the man eating the sandwich, as you know, is Colin Dram. Yo! And joining us as well, a very special guest. If you watched yesterday's video, you already know him. It's Neil Flynn from Cubed. Hiya, how you doing, everybody? <laughs> so, we are all here to talk about the usual Good Morning Source Gaming chatter, what we've been doing and all that, and talk about some of the stuff like this long information drought that's just been plaguing us all, similar to kind of what we talked about yesterday, but Colin's now also here, so way. <laughs> Yay! Uh, I, I, do, you ever, do you ever get, like, I'm a pretty competent human being, but, like, we all, we all make mistakes. And uh, I got really scared when I was tweeting out the announcement right now. Because um, even mm. though I know I manually copied the link for the live stream, I was really hoping I had not just tweeted out Hotel California. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> that would have been really weird. But yeah, that I, like, I double and triple checked and I did not tweet out Hotel California. Good, good. That's more than what I do when I accidentally... Uh, put an everyone announcement and it's an advert because of YouTube mobile if you try and copy a link from YouTube mobile and it's playing an advert before the video it will copy the adverts link and not your video link which is the dumbest thing ever Disgusting. and I'm but I am the dumb man who forgets to check this mm -hmm. I'm doing stuff on my phone I always forget which is really really dumb really really annoying it's really stinky ah. <laughs> but how are you doing today, Neil? How is the weather down in London? Uh, the weather in London is overcast, pretty chilly compared to what it's been the uh, last couple of weeks. Um, but, you know, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that it will actually probably deter people from going outside, given all the circumstances. <laughs> so uh, I think, you know, it's nice to have a bit of a wetter weather. Makes uh, gardening a bit greener as well, so it's always good to have some rain. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Hopefully, though, um, we're going to start be letting out soon. Like, I was talking about it a few moments ago with some family that I was on the call with before this one. And uh, there's like a cafe down my road. It's like a proper local cafe. It's definitely not a necessity. But that's apparently going to be reopening in like two days, which is interesting because I'm assuming that they're not reopening illegally. So... <laughs> Maybe they've gotten government permission, which means that maybe the government's starting to give more permissions for shops to be opening up again. Which, I mean, that would be you know, surprising. Crossed. You know, I've just been itching to get outside to go and play Botkai on my Game Boy Advance. You know, just, just need to go outside. <laughs> I, I need some sunlight. Ah, uh, them. You need need that. Uh, who who made that game? Koji, was it Kojima who made that? Yeah, game? Yeah, it's a, it a Konami game. Um, yeah, so, I knew yeah. it was Konami, I just couldn't remember if it was Kojima or Igarashi, but I think it was Kojima, the weird solar-paneled Game Boy Advance game. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to go outside and uh, immediately come back inside, because there's nothing to do. Uh, I just, I recently, I got a new phone, and uh, one of the features of this, this new cellular telephone um, is that it supports gigabit inter like LTE, which I didn't know was a okay. thing. Like gigabit, that's like one gigabyte down, one gigabyte up. Like that's it's like dummy fast, and that like th that's a thing you can like. I don't know why. Um, it's so unnecessary for like data. Um, and I'm like, damn, I can't wait to go to the one supermarket I know that has it. And like <laughs> play a match of Splatoon or something, and be like, "Wow, you know, <laughs> wow, it's fast, you know." Just just go just, over to just my to... just go over to my supermarket, download Hellblade: Senua's Sacrifice, completely, you know, spend up my data for the month. But at least I'm like, <laughs> "Hey, this 18 gigabyte game downloaded in under 20 minutes." Yeah, I mean, and the data downloaded while I was doing my cold grocery shop. Yeah, it's. <laughs> It's Seems really, really it's like but... <laughs> the worst time to upgrade any electronic unless it's like a computer or something because you're just like, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not using this in my day to day life. Whoops. You know, yeah, just use it up because you got it. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, so um usually the first thing we do is talk about you know how we've been and what we're playing so neil as the special guest why don't you go first what have you been up to this week um well it's funny you say that i have purchased recently a neo geo mini um Ooh. one of the mini consoles from snk it was on sale uh, over here anyway i'm not quite sure if it's on sale anywhere else but i picked it up for 85 pounds that's probably about 90 dollars um in the us it came with two controllers neo geo pads and a hdmi cable um and the unit itself and it's actually quite good the screen's really bright and nice uh i see i saw a lot of people complaining about the joysticks and the actual uh neo geo, neo geo mini pad itself and um, i didn't really have any problems uh playing with it i know the configuration on it is slightly different than the original but as i never had the original i don't have that sort of a memory muscle of actually playing it so you know a lot of those games on there are metal slug and king of fighters so those are the ones i'm most familiar with and, and playing with but at the moment yeah i've been doing that and i've also been playing people's super mario maker 2 levels whoa, which whoa. are amazing i need to be doing that I, I, re I should probably put mario maker 2 on and give it a try hey sorry like... for anyone who just heard that um i was looking up something and an article opened with an auto playing video that decided to blast uh i think Hopefully, a, a, a fucking I don't think it, Zayla, so i don't think it came up <laughs> over i don't think it came up over stream but, it, but i hate those sort of adverts oh uh, the worst when you're like browsing scare. something me... and some sort of loud noise starts playing you have no idea which tab it's from the worst the YouTube worst thing is calls, and you're like what, what is this and it's like some wikipedia advert or something the worst thing is is that it was like at the top of the article was fine it was that i had the audacity to scroll down twice and then it started playing like it was waiting <laughs> for me to it's um, like a pounce <laughs> but i did i did want to interject about the neo geo mini because i have heard really good things about the neo geo mini and i've heard that it's lo a lot better than the um the neo geo x or whatever the the last one they were selling that was like the almost switch hybrid because it had like a a handheld that you could dock and all that i uh, i haven't really seen too much i guess i'm not so as familiar with the snk library and the sort of um that you know i was always aware of it when i was uh, younger but never really be able to get one the only reason i did get this was because i just saw it cheap it popped up on amazon um uh, and the other good uh online retailers also sell them but um yeah no i saw this pop up and i just thought you know what i'm gonna take a i'm gonna take a hit and just go for it and it is actually it does play really well uh you know the screen is great you can actually uh use a portable battery as well so um using the portable battery you can it becomes a portable unit if you want to connect a battery pack to it so you can can you play it on this because it looks like an arcade cabinet doesn't it yeah yeah it's like a mini arcade cabinet it comes with hdmi cable that you can output to your tv um oh. i haven't actually tried that yet um it also has so like more... two little controller ports so you can you don't have to like huddle around it if you plug it into your uh, TV. Uh, I think I've played it on the TV the controllers but I um I, I remember someone saying you could play it on the actual arcade cabinet itself it's not just an aesthetic thing. Yeah, I mean at the moment I haven't really had much need to play it on the TV. I, I quite like doing it. I'm kind of using it as a second screen really. I've had things up on TV and then just using this as a second screen kind of like how i would do with my switch you know sit there mm. in front of the tv and play play some games so yeah it's, it's a lot of fun for that price i don't think i would have paid any more for it and in fact in one way i still find it to be quite pricey especially compared to things like the nes classic or or the you know the uh, mega drive or genesis classics but at the same time you know this also comes with a screen it is portable i think there is mm. more to that unit so it is a lot of fun but what game on it are you having the most fun with so far I've been playing a lot of King of Fighters 98. I, I, the thing is about that is that, you know, it's the one I'm more familiar with. I've got it on the Switch as well, but I had it on the Saturn. Um, yeah, I want, I want to get start playing some Metal Slug games as well, because, you know, that that's, those are the types of games I wanted to play on it. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's just finding the time to do it. <laughs> need to play more of them. I've played Metal Slug 1. One of the Metal Slugs on the Wii, like, didn't they release, like, a collection or something, I think, on the Wii? Unless it was um, just a new game in general. I, I played that at a friend's house. And then King of Fighters, I think I played 95. <laughs> and that's it. No, I played King of Fighters 14. So a friend of mine has that. 
Yeah, I think uh, the King of Fighters games are very similar. You know, it's very hard sometimes to distinguish between which one you play. I heard now. 98 is the really is the, is the best one uh, from a lot of people, at least the best of the classic King of Fighter games. Yeah, I like, I prefer those sort of 16 bit fighters. It's it's you know, that's probably where my my point was really a play mm-hmm. Street Fighter 2 Mortal Kombat. Those are a little bit more uh, nostalgic for me, even though I didn't play them at the time. Yeah, well, there, it's, it's funny that a lot of the 16-bit fighters from the ni- late 1990s are the ones everyone remembers, because um, I was doing a music quiz yesterday that was themed around the Sega Saturn. I didn't know it was going to be themed around this until we started. And the amount of Sega Saturn fighting games that, <laughs> that oh, there yeah. were that I had never heard of before, like The Last Bronx, is <laughs> like... What, why is this? Why is Sega pumping out all these arcade fighters, all these like 3D arcade fighters as well? I don't and know. I feel like and the yet... only one of them that's lasted is Virtual Fighter and Dead or Alive. <laughs> and yet, all of them were like banging. <laughs> they're, they're, they're really good. <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't seem bad at all. So I... <laughs> they, they think it was just oversaturation of fighters on Sega Saturn. <laughs> I mean, the other well, like, I mean... fighters. I mean, the if thing that's like stinky the... and. Uh... Oh, no, it's okay. Uh, I mean, the thing that, that's like stinky and sucks about uh, is that most of those fighters were um, imports. Like you, you had to, uh, like the Saturn was like was like booming in Japan, but like nowhere else. So yeah. like over there, like not only was it a 3D fighting machine, but you also had like all of the Capcom 2D fighters. You had all of Neo, like like uh, SNK's stuff. Um, mm. And the Saturn was doing all of that significantly better than the PlayStation did, and in some respects even better than like the Neo Geo, and um, like like the Sega Saturn is probably a better Neo Geo than the Neo Geo CD, which I think says a lot. <laughs> I kind of wish it was um, region free the Sega Saturn for some for some bizarre reason. I assumed it was. When I um, when I got when I uh, was it living in Japan, I bought some Sega Saturn games from there because they're much easier to get a hold of, and obviously it's not, so I can't play them. <laughs> Which well, means the that I, is... my only sense. localized Sega Saturn games are Virtual Fighter, Virtua Tennis, no Virtual Rally, sorry. Then Baku Baku, this terrifying puzzle game, and Alone in the Dark Two. Oh, and Sonic Jam. I do have Sonic Jam, but I bought that later. Uh, if you see Deep Fear, just like send that my way. Thank you. But um, <laughs> I want to play Deep Fear. I want to buy Sonic the Fighters and Sonic R for the Sega Saturn and play them authentically actually, as the God Fighters, intended. Sonic the Fighters is not on Saturn. You think it would? No, but it's not. It's it's yeah. It's only on the oh. Gems Collection. I don't think they uh, Sonic Gems Collection on the GameCube and, and onwards. I don't think they actually. That was. I think that was the first time they took it out of the arcade. Anyway. Uh, but if that's why play... it didn't show up on the quiz yesterday. Damn. If you want to play <laughs> imports on a Saturn, just buy a uh, action replay and just kind of shove it in the back, and it'll just work. Yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna need to that's, do. That's what yeah. I did. I might, I might soon um, get one of those uh, SD card things that like replaces the disc drive with an SD card reader, because Saturn games are way too goddamn expensive. And um, uh, they are. I, I could, I, I'm not kidding when I say I could literally make like $600 selling off like the 10 Saturn games I own. <laughs> so like, I mean, that's how I'm feeling about most of these older consoles I own where I'm like, I could make a mint selling what I have and they just have the one cartridge with all the ROMs on it and like, you know, thumbs up. Which uh, yeah, I could probably do that as well, to be honest. Yeah, for the amount I mean, of stuff I've got on, well, I got in my covers. <laughs> the Sega Saturn was—it's just incredible, really. If you go over to Japan and get a Japanese unit, they're incredibly cheap because it outsold the N64 over there. I'm yep. fairly certain it did anyway. And yeah. it, it's just an abundance of stuff over there that you can get for the Saturn. I still think games like Radiant Silver Gun and whatever else are still quite expensive, but you could definitely find a lot of cheaper Saturn games that are just really good. And like you said, the beat up yeah. and the shoot 'em up sort of uh profiles were really, really high back then. So Well I figured out how cheap it was when I bought Nights into Dreams for two pounds on the Sega Saturn in Japan. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, okay, well this this seems like too good of a bargain to not have, even if I can't actually play it. 
Yeah, I, I've got a bunch of uh, games like yeah, Sonic Racing and um, Panzer Dragoon Saga as well. Yeah, loads of games that you know are all in Japanese. Can't really understand them. So that's why when I was over there, a lot of the games I had were the sort of shoot 'em ups and beat 'em ups, uh, on rail shooters and anything like that. There's so many classic um, Sega Saturn games. I feel Sega games, in fact, in general, I feel like I should play. Like I've got this weird thing where a lot of big game series, like stuff like Silent Hill. I know purely through osmosis and nothing else. Like, I've never played a Silent Hill game in my life. And I feel like some of them, like Fantasy Star, I should maybe sit down and give a try. Uh, it's, it's, it comes back to the backlog thing again, but I almost wonder if I'd... In- I'm a big retro enthusiast, so I almost wonder if I'd enjoy games like Fantasy Star more so than I would have enjoyed buying and playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. Not that I don't think that's... Because apparently it's a really fun game. Um, me and my friend are playing it at the moment. or Actually, he's playing it and I'm watching him play it. Which, in, in the world of Let's Plays, basically means I've played it. So... <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like, I almost feel like I should play more of them. Like I've been debating picking up the Sega Genesis collection on the Switch. Um, but it was it wasn't on sale over here, and it was in America for like oh, don't, a little bit. But by the time do I that. saw, don't, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't 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 buy the Genesis collection. It's really bad. It's really bad. Is it? Oh, maybe I should buy. I hear the Mega Drive Mini is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, I actually reviewed both. I actually oh. think the the Genesis collection or the Mega Drive collection is good value for money if you just want to pick it up for five minutes and then forget about it. You know, like a lot of the snes like for example i've got a snes classic but it, it rarely gets played and realistically if i didn't have one now and i had nintendo switch online i probably wouldn't be so bothered about trying to hunt down a, a snes classic hmm. likewise with the mega drive uh, mini which i still think goes for about 55 60 pound over here at the moment if you can find mega drive classics collection for about 15 to 20 pounds sometimes it goes up on on you know retailers sites are quite cheap then I'll pick it up if you only want to play it on a Sunday. But yeah, if you can, if you if you really want that great emulation, perhaps get the Mega Drive Mini and just fork out for it. I mean, my yeah. biggest problem with the the Genesis Collection on Switch is that there's like this horrible input latency, like genuinely terrible. It's 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 super noticeable even in handheld mode. There's like this um. Especially now that you have, like, the Sega Ages releases of stuff like Sonic 2, and you can just, mm-hmm. like, compare them back-to-back, and, and one feels like there's just a half-second delay between hitting a button and jumping, and then in the other, you're like, yeah, this is how Sonic 2 should play. It's very, very rough. I, I just would not recommend it. I, I think it's because they have that stupid... Releases. I think it's because they, uh... They have that stupid, um interface that menu that's like 3d rendered and so they have to keep rendering that in the background while you know so everything else just lags games. yeah maybe it's, it's i remember on ps4 that, yeah. and xbox one people were complaining about it not running good either which is really weird <laughs> you I think it should, they... like i had it on the xbox 360 the original mega drive collection i think that ran fine well yeah because it's it's <laughs> it's not this like weirdly overblown yeah, <laughs> thing I don't. They've messed something up with the new version of it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's one of those things that I feel like I should sit down and find the time to play a lot of old Sega games because I've never played Panzer Dragoon either. Uh, I did play Sonic. We had a thing uh, where PlayStation Now was uh, doing like free giveaway, like you know, a week free trial. So before all this kicked off, me and my friends. Um, got that free trial and ended up just playing a bunch of really old Sega games like Fighting Vipers, Fighters Mega Mix, Sonic the Fighters, Daytona USA. You know, Daytona USA has a karaoke mode in it where you can just sing the songs as the car automatically drives around the track. Uh, I've never <laughs> heard bizarre. of that. <laughs> this bizarre thing because some of the songs are literally just like him going, do do do. Do 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 do. Literally, you just sit in the stand and they're going do 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 as the cars drive around the track, and I'm like, what am I doing with my life with this? What's going on? I forgot. Um, I forgot that I actually had Phantom try out the because because I think the the Genesis collection had like just come out when uh, we did that Smash stream. 
And so okay. I was like, try this. And he was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I know. It got a little better. They they released an update that made it a little better, but it's still not like... When, when like, the actual Genesis itself through a frame meister plays better, that's, that's something's up, you know? <laughs> yeah, oh, that's something I should probably try at some point. At the moment, what I'm playing, uh, what I've been playing this week, other than Animal Crossing as per norm at the, at the moment, is um, I started playing La Mulana 2. Mm. And it's really impressive how much I remember from La Mulana <laughs> 1, which I hadn't played in, like, a decade. And I, I jump into this and like instantly loved it. And I was like, oh yeah, I remember this location. Oh yeah, I remember this character. I remember all of this. And yeah, it's it's just as it's it's clear that this one's got a bigger budget and has had more time put into it because like there are noticeable upgrades all over the place, especially in the visual department. But it's still complete bullshit and nonsense. Like I spent a good 30 minutes today basically doing nothing in that game but wandering back and forth from section to section being like where the hell am i going next like uh, climbing up this same wall being like have i missed something here is there something i need to hit all this that and all i had to do was go into like a specific room which i'd been in previously and nothing had happened but now i had activated a switch somewhere else that's setting off a new dialogue options here in this one room and it's like oh jesus christ <laughs> But I love it. It's one of those few games where, um, like with Breath of the Wild, where I don't know what to expect, and I'm sort of taking loads of mental notes, being like, okay, what does this cryptic message mean? How can I like translate this into layman's terms for myself so I can figure out where, <laughs> where I'm going? Have either of you guys played the La Mulana games? Uh, I, I have played never the first heard of it. One. Not all the way through, just like a, a, like a good chunk of it. La Mulana, uh, for those who don't know, was it's kind of similar to Cave Story in a way. Um, it was originally made by a, a group of people, not just one person like Cave Story was, but as a fan game that was meant to replicate games from the MSX era. Mm -hmm. And so it was designed with this fully in mind, and it was a Metroidvania game where you're an Indiana Jones-style character exploring a labyrinth called La Mulana. And it's got some pretty cool gimmicks within it. Like you have a laptop and uh, on this laptop, it has a certain amount of space and each app you pick up throughout the game, because for some reason this ancient ruins has apps lying around in it. Have um, like you, you can load, you can only load a certain amount of apps that your laptop actually has space in. And so say if you didn't need the map, you could take that off of the laptop and load something else in its place. And there's stuff like you can't read the writing, so you need some sort of translation device in order to be able to do it. So you need to go find like the Rosetta Stone app and have that loaded in. But obviously, if you take that off, it means you can't read any of the war text and stuff like that. It's got these really cool little features in it. You, the way your life system works is you have your health and then below it, this meter. And this meter gets filled up by all the drops you pick up. And only once the meter has reached the max, it then like refills all your health. But the way your the, your health increase, the more your health increases, the longer this meter gets. So the more health you have, the longer it actually takes for you to build up enough stuff to get, uh, heal yourself. Which is a pretty interesting mechanic that I've not seen other games use. So it's it, it's it's pretty it's pretty fun. It's uh, really good. But yeah, it has the same sort of history as uh, Cave Story does with Nicalis, in that they came along and were like, oh, we can port this to we can make it an enhanced version of this game for the Wii for the Wii on put it on the WiiWare for you. And they signed up and then the Callis like kind of messed around with it for ages and they kept delaying it for no reason and doing all of this. And it ended up like I don't think it released on the Wii until like 2011 or something. But there was a lot of drama behind it. But thankfully unlike Cave Story, um developers managed to get the rights back to La Mulana. And now NIS America are publishing it, and they're publishing the sequel, which is significantly better because NIS America is a significantly better company than Nicalis is. Yeah. So yay! But it, it, the the collection is out now on the Switch: the first La Mulana and the second La Mulana as one set. So I would recommend playing it, but I'm actually going to do a proper review of it once I've gotten further in. Who knows? It might get properly bullshit further down the line. 
that makes it frustrating. Lord knows the second boss of that game was really annoying. But then again, I'm also playing a platformer using the Pro Controller, so maybe there's something to do with it. I've been uh, tempted to buy the uh, the physical of La Mulana 1 and 2, because they, they made uh, a nice little... Um, <clears throat> I know NSI, like, NIS America always has their, their cutesy little... Um, big boy editions where they they put like way too much shit in the box but uh <laughs> they they also i think just made like a standard physical which is always like fine and dandy mm. I, I i think it, I, I think it's cool they did the same thing with yomawari i was talking about it with like nas america i don't know i don't know if i'd call them a triple a publisher but possibly no, a double everything a they produce publisher. is like pretty niche that's the thing that they're publishers of like triple B games. Triple B. I don't, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, like I, I don't really, I can't really call stuff like La Mulana indie. They are. It is a studio that's made a bunch of games and has. I mean, <laughs> it has I, like multiple people working in it. But I get. But but it's not self-published. It's not really indie. I mean, the biggest it's the games same for, like, they Yomawari. produce are like <laughs> the biggest games they produce. At least like you know publishing wise is like Disgaea and like anytime SNK puts out something which yeah, they have the SNK rights which oh no good, they actually just... they like momentarily stopped doing the SNK stuff because I don't think they did anything for Samurai Showdown which is a real sad day because that would have been really yeah neat. actually they didn't do Samurai Showdown Play the new one because they've done every they've done everything else. Who who published the new Samurai Showdown? I think it was just self published. Honestly, this SNK trying to get back into the swing of things. I mean, might as well. Yeah, it was yeah, it was self published by SNK in Japan, and then... I'm pretty sure KOF 14 was also self published. I don't think an NIS had anything to do with that. It was just like SNK ones. Okay, fair enough. I guess NIS just have yeah the anniversary smaller SNK games, the anniversary yeah. ones. By the way, the Switch version of Sam Show is good. That's good. I will say that it is. It is <laughs> it's not amazing. It's not perfect. Um, but it's it's uh, significantly better than than you'd think it would be. Hmm. And that's all one could ask for. <laughs> Did you play? Yeah, NIS else? America also uh, it publishes the Nippon Itchy games and the. Niho, Niho and Falcom games, it seems, because it also published Yeast mm -hmm. over here. So it's, it's, it's in a weird position. <laughs> uh, Falcom is a weird company. and they, they have so many games, and they're all like stupidly generic RPGs. Like the Trails series, which isn't the Trials series. Which is significantly more popular, they, like tra Trails of Cold Steel, which is just a name that I makes me laugh every time because all I can think of is Cold Steel the Hedgehog. Oh. Whenever I do that, <laughs> uh, they're, they're, they're they're strange. It reminds me of Data East before Data East went bankrupt. Data East made a ton of games back in the day. I feel like just, I've seen I feel um, like I've seen a bunch of Data East games just pop up on the eShop all of a sudden. Yeah, sale, um, anyway. that's something. Uh, what's it called? The Johnny Arcade. Yeah, the collection Johnny or Turbo Arcade. Johnny collection Turbo, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's where all the Data East uh, things came uh, are currently in. Like Data East went bankrupt, but then kind of came back under a new name that I don't remember what it's called. I don't remember. Tron. I I don't know. No idea. D4 Enterprise. I do, all their sort of games are sort of split all over the place. But like they made Windjammers, Glory of Heracles. By the Pay way, on, however, by the way, gamers, I just want to say that like um, one th one thing that's gotten me like pretty heated as of late is um, is like all of these like super limited physical releases for indie games. Like this needs to stop. They need to stop doing this with like every indie game where they like they're like oh for the next week like we'll be selling pre-orders for a physical copy that costs like ten dollars more than the actual game and then uh, it'll be gone forever collectors and I'm I'm like made me really mad uh, like I am eight bit just did it with a uh, Kentucky Route Zero TV edition and I was like oh that's cool I'll get a physical of that and then I completely missed it by like a day. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Limited Run does that shit all the time. 
<laughs> and it's it like it never it's never lined up properly because they always like to do their they do their like I, I think the worst trend is when it's for indie games that haven't released yet like they keep doing like oh yeah pre-order the physical of streets of rage 4 so you can get this overpriced physical copy two months after the game comes out and it's like why like <laughs> no like just do the pre-order sooner so i can oh, get it on release they did the same yeah. thing with uh, River City Girls and um, Vitamin Connection, where it's like, why would I ever want this? Because I won't have the <laughs> game until way later. What if the game sucks? You know, you know how you know how much it sucked having to sit there going like, man, I'm I'm seeing River City Girls is getting a good six out of ten from everyone. I'm really glad I spent thirty dollars on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I can wait longer to play this okay game. Like, it's just, like, uh You might actually get your wish, though. I think um, maybe in the next gen or something, you know, I I don't see a lot of these indie games being able to afford to to keep sort of uh, publishing, self-publishing, or kickstarting. I do think that we'll, they'll, they'll fall by the wayside, I reckon. I think it's especially annoying because... Um... Companies like Limited Run do business with Best Buy. And so, like, if you go on their website, they'll just be like, oh, by the way, these games might get their own run by Best Buy that aren't limited. They'll just be out for however long we feel like it. Which is even more fucking infuriating, because then it's like, just team up with Best Buy to make a physical run for when the game comes. Like, what, <laughs> what's the what's the end game here? It's a null thing. <laughs> really really upsetty spaghetti's me i i just i don't i don't like it it's it's, it's annoying but with <sighs> that said you do, you do like the actual content that they put out it's just the timing of it i guess yeah of course because like a physical copy of turok 2 is badass i just you know i i don't like i just I'm gonna wait. It's, yeah, <laughs> I don't like I don't like waiting. I don't like when they do it long after the game has already come out. And like I don't like or I don't like the fact that it also doesn't line up with the release dates and it's also usually like ten, twenty dollars more than the actual game on the eShop. Yeah. Like like <laughs> I don't know. I, I sometimes I go on Twitter and I see people who are like really, really up in arms about like everything needing a physical release. And I get it. You want to own the thing, you want to put it on a shelf. But like I've gotten to the point where I've just taken the L and I just started games like getting games digitally. Because it's like I don't like I, I don't want to play this game. This is more obnoxious, like objectively. What are you playing then at the moment, Colin? Oh, I played through all the Portal games this week. <laughs> okay, I uh, does that include that Portal Bridge game they released? I did. I actually, I have not finished that. I actually, <laughs> I, 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 it sucks because um, Haitani was in chat and they worked on it. <laughs> but, but really, <laughs> they worked on Bridge Constructor Portal. But I don't know. I just, I don't gel with that game too much. It's uh, it depends it's, how much you're into construction games to be honest yeah but uh I, I i recorded a, a thing for for a thing that i won't say what it is but you'll 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 see it in the near future and um mainly because it's not being made by me so it'll actually be done but uh in <laughs> preparation for it i played through all the portal games again because it's just it's just been so long since i played them and uh, the great thing about the portal games is you can beat them in like a not even in an afternoon, just like now, you know, because the first portal's like 80 minutes long, and then the second one's like four hours long. It's, yeah, whatever. Start the first one now, and then you'll be done by the time the stream's over. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> That's I not could, how I you could, did it. <laughs> I, I could have a little 10 by 10 window in the, uh, in the Good Morning Source <laughs> gaming thing, and it's just me speeding through Portal 1 again. Um, and that game... Uh, is perfect. Portal 1 is a perfect video game. I, I have no complaints. Like, <laughs> it, it is still uh, just, just one of the best things I've ever played. Um, and it holds up extremely well, even 13 years later. Um, I think, I mean, if I had to complain, I wish the platforms were a little faster. That's, that's really about it. Um, I wish the source engine wouldn't kick me in a random direction and then kill me. <laughs> like, like, 
because I landed on a surface weirdly. But that's like the engine and not that's like the weird physics engine and, and not the actual video game. game. Um, but otherwise, yeah, game game good. If you've never played Portal One, uh, do it. It's it's a great video game. And then Portal Two is like almost as good, just like maybe one point lower. Uh, cause it's, you know, it's not as like to the point as the first one. Cause it's like longer and there's like a plot. Um, mm. and the, the puzzles are a little easier and, and whatever, but, uh, yeah, that game is great too. And then I finally played the co-op for portal two, which I've never done. I I, I think I played through okay. like the first chapter of it, but I never finished it, but now I have been, I beat the co-op, but I, I've beaten the co-op in portal. That was a lot of fun. It's great. It's great. You feel yeah. like a real, uh, it, it's, it's, I love how that co-op is like, it's, it's not competitive at all, but it's, it, you do feel like a little bit of competition because you're like, who's going to have like the brain blast first to like figure out <laughs> how to do this portal. Like there's been so many instances where I figure it out and I'm like, all right, you go there, you do that. And he's like, oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, dude, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's how it's, it's how it's done. That's how you portal. Um, that's great. Like, that's fantastic. I love that. That game's good. I, I, uh, I, I really wish, I really wish Valve would put their games on the Switch, um, so I can play through Half-Life 2 again, but also, just so I can have Portable Portal all the time. You can play Half-Life, finally. <laughs> it's a good time. It's a good, 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 good time. Otherwise, uh... I post about it on Twitter. I was messing around with like 3DS emulation, uh, not emulation of the 3DS, just emulation on the 3DS. I was playing Mario 64. I can't believe it runs good. <laughs> I it's, it's it's a miracle. I everyone was like, yeah, N64 emulation on the 3DS, not gonna happen. But Super Mario 64 plays perfectly on a 3DS. Nice. And then everything else just runs like shit. But you know what? Like we're getting there. <laughs> we're Instead, getting there. Mario, Mario sixty four runs well, and that was the first game. So eventually, we'll get to the level where Paper Mario can run. I mean, Paper Mario was actually running fine. It just had a ton of graphical glitches. Um, <laughs> what really surprised me was there being no graphical glitches in uh in goldeneye like it looked perfect it was just that the uh the frame rate was like a little slow that that was it like it's okay. almost playable if they update that emulator like once or twice like it'll be perfect real question is though it does ocarina of time run well on the 3ds <laughs> uh... the nintendo 64 version <laughs> Uh, matt asked me to do that because he's like i want to play the objective best version and uh, I'll just, I'll post the photo that I took. <laughs> I, cause I, 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 I took a photo of, um, of a scene from the intro and it's, it's choice. Here we go. Hang on. Just gotta, uh, man, nice. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get a phone that is faster. <laughs> Put up on screen as soon as it finishes. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, needs textures, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's all. Though, though, that's a little tomfoolery on my end because, uh, oh, why is why XSplit? XSplit, what are you doing here, buddy? Not letting you post it on the stream. <laughs> it was like sideways. Don't do that. But um. Can I, uh, can I blow this up any further? No, I'm just going to do that. But uh, yeah, just that, that one little camera angle just was like untextured and it was really funny. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> the game looks totally fine and it ran at like 15 FPS. So again, it's like, it's like one update away from running perfectly. Nice. Cool. Well then, if we have covered everything that... We were we've done this week. Why don't we move on to our main set of topics? Oh, sorry, Ugh, tired. Sleepy boy. Sleepy boy. I am. Ugh. So I have forgotten to post the agenda in this chat. Give me one second, oh. <laughs> and I'll be doing. Right, I think I think the big topic for this week. Well, well, 
Uh, Flynn, uh, Neil and I have already talked about it. Um, it was uh, in in our recommended video that you should definitely all go watch the No June Nintendo Direct. What does this mean for the rest of the year? So, <laughs> Neil, like, we won't talk about it too much, but uh, Colin, what, did you have any thoughts around the fact that there's no June Direct? <laughs> I'll be like, real gamers. I didn't watch the video. But, uh, uh, I mean, like, my, I, I've already, it's really funny, because, like, we had the same discussion back when it was seeming like there wasn't going to be a March Direct. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we got the mini, and, like, it's, it's like, I feel like, I feel like, if anything, this news, or it's not even news, it's a rumor, but, um, it's, it's a report, but, like, report. <laughs> I feel like, I, I feel like this has kind of proved, uh, how sort of superficial and, and just, just how much... Uh, people put way too much credence into uh, into the Nintendo Directs, and I feel like I've said this on previous Good Morning Source Gamings, like not even during times of of drought or anything, but just mm. like just generally when we're talking about Directs, like I, I I hate the attitude of everything has to be announced during a Direct, and and the Direct is like has to be the only way we get our news and. I, 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 like, I don't know, I'm reading this, and it's weird because people are reading into this news as Nintendo has nothing to announce. They have nothing. They, they will, they're gonna wait till the next Direct at the end of the summer to announce all their games. And I, that just doesn't, to me, the news reads like they're not doing a June Direct because they just don't have enough. And when I say they, I mean everyone whose games are put into a direct. Because 60% of airtime is like third party anyway. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's, it's, it's this situation where I, you know, they're probably just not choosing to, to do a direct because they just don't have enough to fill 40 minutes of it. Mm -hmm. And whatever they do have to announce, they will just probably announce on their own time. And it's very odd because I see all these, um, like, theories of, like, oh, what if they announce the Mario collection by teasing, by releasing All-Stars on the Switch? And it's like, no, they'll just... If Nintendo has to, they'll do what any other company does, which is they'll put out a tweet going, hey, check out this YouTube premiere link. And they premiere it the next day. Nintendo is not like a grassroots company. They're like a multi-billion dollar corporation. They can they can put out a, a video announcing anything and it'll guaranteed have traction. <laughs> it's true. The, the direct is more convenience than anything else. Like, even though it's this... Also just, it's hype. <laughs> yeah. For all the build up for it. Their single video announcements get more views than the directs anyway on their um, on their YouTube page. That's it's true. better for SEO, yeah. probably. People are, are searching for individual games, and then um, you know they they get directed to that. No, no, but I mean, I mean, like Ring Fit Adventure and Labo and and the Switch reveal. Ah, uh, right. Yes. Like those, okay. those, those didn't have like big, like you know, streams. They just were like they just dropped at a specific time and went here's the link, and those have like millions of views on them, even more than some of the directs. Um. It's it's mm -hmm. true, actually. I mean, with, with with those, you know, Nintendo tend to come up with one wild, wacky project a year. You know, we we've had we've had the Nintendo Labo, we've had Ring Fit now. Yeah. I wonder what their plan would have been this year. I wonder what they would have done to innovate something this year, and it could still happen. Um, so, so, you know, they... so someone in chat says, "I don't think they would announce big third first party titles outside of direct." And my answer is, "Why not?" Because I know, I get it. It sounds out of character because they they've never done it outside of a direct. But in the current situation, where they have outside of Clubhouse Games fifty one, uh, they have nothing else planned for the rest of the year. The Switch is on a streak right now. And on top of that, they're also like a multi-billion dollar corporation that, that you know, they have the clout anyway. I don't see a reason, like, I, I think the idea of, of them taking whatever is close to being finished now 
and then having to save that for a direct later on that would also have a bunch more stuff ready just doesn't make sense to me when they could just announce and release games that are ready to go, which, you know, makes sense. That's That works. That's what people do. That's what companies do. Well, what we might see is more DLC, perhaps, because, you know, that Mario Maker 2, obviously that was in, you know, that was in the oven for quite some time, that, that sort of DLC that came out more recently, the update. Maybe we could start to see, you know, more updates to other games, because we saw Ring Fit Adventure get that update, you know, with the with the rhythm game that sort of got inserted oh, really in some of the other... Really yeah, and, you know, there's some other, some other casual stuff that is there as well. You know, we might see more Splatfests returning, or... Well, I'm just, I'm just saying generally, like, they have mm. games in development. They, they, some of them have to be close, like, you know, closer to done than others. I don't think they're going to put off those games just so they can have a longer string of other games to announce. Especially, you know, given the current situation... Like, I think, like, the Direct Mini, I feel like people are really glossing over that. Because it's it's very obvious that the Direct Mini was supposed to be a full, fat, 40, 45-minute Direct. And they just cut out all of the, the first-party stuff. Or whatever was going to be in it that just wasn't ready. Because all the announcements there are just from, like, you know, from the day it released to mid-June. So... I, 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 I think them meaning no, like, I, I don't see why it's a far-fetched idea to think the idea of just them, you know, the one or two big name games they have that's supposed to, that's, that are close to done, maybe a collection or, or whatever, um, they just get announced on their own, and then they just do another direct mini for third parties if they have to. It just I, I, I don't know if that's too optimistic, but I just I, that's what it just seems to me. I don't I don't see why they couldn't do it. I know it's Nintendo. I know they do weird things, but it's just like I don't like if they have to do something, they will do it. Like people still go on about how like oh yeah, we're gonna get a Smash Direct one day. Hasn't happened. We've just had these little information dump live streams. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder that does that is a good segue into. Is that still going to go ahead in June? I think it will. Oh, yeah. Like, it depends, like, how far into um, element is this arms character and will they actually uh, be ready on time? I feel like they probably are done. <laughs> so I, I reckon it probably will still be announced in June. And that can be the big thing to sort of keep people over. But I mean, realistically, though, um, Clearly, the reason we're not getting anything is because Nintendo realized they peaked with Clubhouse games. And there's just no point in announcing anything and following that. But yeah, so, I don't yeah. know. It's, they've, they've, they've completed it. 20, 2020 <laughs> is over now. It's done. I mean, I personally, I'm of the impression that right now, given the current situation, and I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to get demonetized. I don't care about what's coming out later. Like, like if they went ahead, if they somehow had all the like you know announcements ready for for a June direct, half of it would be like 2021 shit. I don't care about that. I don't care what's coming out in 2021. I'm stuck in my house right now. I want to know <laughs> what I'm going to be able to play in two months. Yeah, Th that's, that's why I like the direct mini so much because it was just hey. Here's everything from now to June. I'm like perfect. I don't. I don't need to know what's coming out in November 2020 in in March. Yeah. I do kind of think that that is a, a good point. Like, I I I, I know what every, everyone wants to know what new games are coming out. Uh, obviously, um, even if the games were 2021, they want to know that this is something that they want is in development so that they can anticipate it and be hyped for it. Yeah, but. I do, I do get that. Like, if something is gonna still release, they're gonna have to announce it, obviously, anyway. And uh, people are worried that this means Nintendo is not gonna have anything until November 2020. But I, re I really doubt that's the case. I think there, there is just something to be said that things that will push back for later probably are just, you know, they they don't want to be announced them too early. And that's kind of been Nintendo's MO for a while now. Not Let's not announce things way too early unless it's Bayonetta 3 for some yeah. reason. Uh, like, um, 
they announced them just a few months for like yeah clubhouse games is a good example because it was announced what well, it comes out in june but it was announced in may tokyo oh, mirage yeah. Report was announced in september but it came out in january like only a few months following on from each one I, can't I think, when brain training I, I, I think the weirdest the point I've seen people bring up is the investors meeting because it's like it's like investors are going to walk out if they have nothing coming out and I'm just <laughs> like I'm like all right first off that investors meeting is either going to get canceled or it's going to be held over like zoom it's not <laughs> zoom. like it, it, second of all the, the, the switch is the best selling <laughs> console right now it's literally yeah. sold out across the earth. They sold out. They st like they they can't make enough. I <laughs> like Animal Crossing is the best selling game of the year. Like I, I think it's I don't I don't think it's the situation. I don't I don't understand how how anyone can walk into this being like I guess Nintendo is just choosing not to release games later this year. It's like no, it's like it's not that. Saying that with the investors meeting, we're gonna get a lot of information. I mean, it should happen. I'm fairly certain it will because they, yeah. you know, they've said it's gonna happen in the next few days. But with that, we're gonna find out game sales. We're gonna find out that Animal Crossing's probably gone and sold I don't know, 15, 20 million units in this first month on sale or something silly like that. Yeah. We're gonna probably find out that the Switch is up year on year. You know, we're gonna find out that there's so many Nintendo Switch Online subscribers gives them more excuse to put some stuff onto Nintendo Switch Online. They, they, they could be dropping more Super Nintendo and NES games. They could be putting N64 online right now just to placate the fact that there's nothing else coming out. You know, they, they, there's so much they could do, and, and yeah. they're not doing it. But that, that the investors meeting should definitely indicate some, some healthy sales. I don't think they're going to announce any games from it, obviously. But the investors, like you said, they're a multi-billion dollar company. They will... They have stuff, and the investors will know. They will know what's coming up. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other, the yeah. other thing that might happen as well that we probably haven't really thought about is that the investors always want to know about Nintendo's mobile offering, and it's something that, as Nintendo fans, we don't often care too much about it. I never really played Dragalia Lost. Uh, the only one I really kind of got into was Mario Kart Tour. You know, what, what's Nintendo's next mobile offering that could come out? from this investors meeting because that's where they see the money being and that's where you know they're gonna probably tell nintendo you need to start announcing some more you know <laughs> nintendo Hello, mobile Nick. games yeah. it's the zelda mobile game that's been rumored for so long i mean because i feel like that's got to be the one that comes next i think the thing that's bigger in the investors meeting though is people are going to be asking them like what are your current plans given the climate like how people are going to people are going to be asking them how has this affected development of stuff yeah. does think people stay on track and nintendo have to be honest with investors like they can't lie around it but we'll know where, like, i'm sure the answer is going to be something like it's obviously had an impact but not so severe that it's disrupted our full plans things may be pushed back a month or two but that'll be it but I think that's that's going to be the bigger news that comes out of the investors meeting. What Nintendo Nintendo will talk about how they're working from home policies and stuff like that. Um, but my, hopefully that placates some of the people out there who are rapidly in fear that Nintendo has nothing. That they'll just be like, no, we things had to be shuffled around and stuff, but everything's still on way as planned. It may just come out a month or so later than originally intended. Because then, like, people can actually be like, oh, well, Nintendo have said that they've actually got games coming out, which, you know, they shouldn't have to say. I think whatever games they had planned... <laughs> I think whatever games they had planned for this year, or at least for the middle of the year, are totally fine. It's just that mm. whatever they have announced for holiday, whatever they have ready for, like, whatever they had planned for early 2021, I feel like those games are probably in a really bad spot right now, and those were probably going to make up the majority of announcements in something like the, the March Direct or in a June Direct. And so those are the things that are causing this not to happen because they're, they're only going to have so much. And I'm pretty sure, like, I'm sure some people would say a good alternative would just them doing another Direct Mini with uh, the, the first party stuff, but... I feel like at this point it'd just be better to separate the first party and third party stuff and just have 
everyone announce what they're working on and when it's going to release on their own time, probably for the better. Yeah, I mean, they can do that. I mean, we got Deadly we Premonition. Saw, yeah, we saw that with Deadly Premonition date. too, and I'm sure, and, and I'm sure Bethesda will announce uh, Doom Eternal Switch during the Keeley Fest. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, no, EA, EA have just gone and put another trailer out for Burnout as well, which is you know, <laughs> it's yeah, it's only a it's only a port of an old game where they've not really it's... done anything to it and, and charged more for it. But you know, it's... Nintendo are supporting that EA release, which is yeah you know, something yeah. <laughs> that they are doing a lot more of is sort of supporting those third party releases by putting tweets out and trailers out for them on their channel yeah oh uh, what, what was i gonna say i think i think it's also worth considering the fact that at least in japan which is obviously where all of nintendo's first parties will be coming from Cero it was closed for like the entire month uh, yeah. i think it i think it reopens it's, e it's either closed this month or it reopens this month was in april but like that pushed everything back and i don't think nintendo don't want to make any announcements if it, they can't actually get anything out because of Cero, and also production of physical stuff like we were talking about this in the discussion the other day me and neil but um having uh, i'm sure they would they would want any sort of mario anniversary game to be on the store shelves like when it comes out not just digital only and they're going to be struggling to actually print a lot of stuff like they're struggling to print the switch stuff because every everyone is like square came out and was like we're still pushing final fantasy 7 out but people who wanted physicals are going to just have to wait because we couldn't print enough of them before all this all kicked in yeah. I, I can't imagine nintendo probably did xenoblade and stuff a long time back oh yeah well well we already know out, things that were coming out in this summer probably yeah. would have been started printing now which they can't do so they don't want to announce that these games are coming out because they can't dedicate a release date to them i mean we already know they were they were printing too. animal crossing like at the start of march to begin with so that's why like that's been fine yeah uh and and they've they've probably been producing xenoblade carts throughout like all of april <laughs> like just 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 really uh because that game's like rated that game like they already have like the collector's editions like taken like beauty shots of you know yeah, that game is basically it is ready to come out and yeah. just waiting the date that they've set forward to release it <laughs> But yeah, as Pretty I said, cool. I just I I really only care about what's coming out in the near future. Um mm -hmm. I know that's gonna lead to memes like where's SMT five and where's Bayo three <laughs> and Metroid Prime Four and all that, but I mean that that's that's just like I I I mean I guess it's great to wanna have something to look forward to over the horizon later on. Cause cause you know, like who doesn't? Um mm -hmm. You want to be able to, uh, epic, epic style own the other console fanboys by giving them a big old impressive list of video games. Uh, but I, I don't know. Right now, I just, I, I, like, you know, games like Cyberpunk, that might as well come out in like a year for me. Like, cause it's like, I, September doesn't feel soon. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I was going to say, you know, go back to Josh's point there about retail, which we talked about, you know, in the, in the discussion before. The one thing I just thought of, uh, he brought it up just a second ago as well, Josh, I don't know if you realize, but um, we got brain training release over here, which is Brain Age in the US. Um, we we saw a release of that back in January, like at the start of January. Yeah. I don't think that's been released in the US as far as I'm aware. Um, no, but there's happens. like there's like a weird conspiracy theory about why that hasn't been released, and that that has something <laughs> to do with like false advertising or something. Brain Age had gone uh, like completely age. dark in the U.S. It's very odd, but dude, there's just like no explanation for it. And there's something weird with the series in general, considering you guys got the 3DS game for, for, for like four years following your guys getting it. It was a joke over here with us um that you know our brain age was constantly being put on like nintendo's upcoming release schedules as tbd and it was like you know a mighty number no. nine 3ds joke where everyone's like oh it will come eventually you know guys it's, it's on its way they keep saying it's on its way but then brain age actually did come out <laughs> suddenly 
it was like, oh yeah, by the way, here here we have a release date for you now, and everyone was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it came out very late compared to the US. Yeah. That's for sure. But now we have the opposite situation where it's launched over here in the Europe's, not in the US for some reason. With the US, and they have not like, here. and they have like no plans to release in the US. It's like not on anything. It's just like, it's, it's like, really nope. strange. Yeah, <laughs> and that's a game I can't see doing very well just solely digitally because again, you know, Brain Age will appeal to a certain demographic in a certain age range. I think that will remember the, the DS games and. You know, if it's not on a store shelf, um, then it's not really worth picking up for a lot of people. I mean, the only reason I've got it is mainly that stylus. I wanted a stylus for Super Mario Maker 2. <laughs> and uh, the physical release of uh, Brain Training has has that in the box. So, As it came with that. <laughs> remember our adventure to try and get a Mario Maker stylus? Oh, yep. I definitely remember that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh... Yeah, I guess that is if there's anyone else has anything they want to bring up about this this delay to the, for the Nintendo Directs, we can move on to the next topic. I I just you know I I just want games I now. That's <laughs> you know too bad. I, I, was, I was we're, I was, we're in the de- <laughs> we're in the deadly drought where there aren't any games coming out. Now. Well, is, no, it's not, I, it's not that there it's not that there's. <laughs> It's not that there aren't games coming out, it's that they're coming out too late. I am am segueing, you shush now. No, but like, (laughs) no, hear me out. Hey, hey, 2K, you don't have to release Bioshock, XCOM, and Borderlands on the same day. Like, you could release Bioshock a little earlier, and, like, you're gonna get the same amount of sales. Like, no, no one's, no one's buying those games to get, the Xenoblade's coming out that day, like, you, you... You know what you're doing. Like, just release Bioshock 2 Minerva's Den a little early just for me, and, like, <laughs> we'll be fine. Well, they were coming out, we're coming out on the same day. Yeah, it's like chaotic day. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then like, The Outer Worlds comes out on June 5th. It's like, all right, like, okay. Uh, I'm actually, I'm actually in interested. One week. Yeah. Uh, Clubhouse Games, man, it comes out, it's the same day. It's not going to do very well. Is it really? Is it coming out June 5th? I'm pretty sure Clubhouse Games comes out June 5th. I thought it was like do you know mid- what? There's actually a lot coming out in June. Nintendo should do one of those infographics that they did a couple of months it ago, is June just saying 5th. how oh much stuff is coming out. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, because <laughs> then Burnout comes out June 11th. Um, you know, June, June is actually looking quite packed for Nintendo. It, not from necessarily their games, but, you know, I completely forgot about those 2K games coming out. And Deadly <laughs> Premonition 2 is coming out in July. Yeah. Bad ass. Yeah. I cannot wait. <laughs> But, like, I literally cannot wait. Like, just release it sooner anyway. <laughs> no, it's got the a soundtrack from the guy who did uh, Hotel Dusk. Shame, yeah. I'm going to miss uh, Driving Idiot and all of the blatantly rip-off uh, <laughs> OST from the original. Alas, <laughs> I will take anything from... Uh, I'll take music from the Hotel Dusk guy. I can live with that. <laughs> but, uh... but the, the original Dead, Deadly Premonition's on sale on the eShop at the moment. It's, it's on yep. a really cut-down price, bucks. so... Yeah, yeah, get people. It's a good game. Buy it. <laughs> but, um... but also, speaking of delays, uh, I got a little email from from a certain Kickstarter of uh, of uh, wonderful one hundred and one getting delayed. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It's a it's a it's a shame that I mean. So actually, the it's only the physical that's getting delayed, isn't it? The it's still coming out. This well, planned well, that's digitally. The th- well, that's the thing, is that the news is that the physical is delayed to, like, the end of June, right? Yeah. But if you go on the eShop, it's like, yeah, Wonderful 101 digital release is June 11th. It's like, well, then what? That means the game was just delayed as a whole, because it was supposed to... Like, you can't... Like, the physical was supposed to come out this month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The physical was so, meant to come out this month along with the game digitally. Yeah, the physical so, was meant to come out in April, not even in May. It was meant to come out in April. Well, they they planned so um they Sorry. planned April, but then they when they hit the uh the goal to add more stuff, they pushed it to May. Oh, okay. which is fair. Which is fine. Yeah. I don't. I don't did, did you back it? Did you back it on Kickstarter? I yeah, I did it in like the first like thirty minutes. I got the whole <laughs> uh, physical copy. Nice. I was like forty the, bucks. That's what. That's good. Yeah, it's <laughs> the only thing I've ever backed on Kickstarter. Um, and it's kind of going back to the point that you you, you mentioned earlier in the, in the discussion, really. Like, <laughs> in a way, it sounds really selfish, but 
I kind of want to have that game before everybody else because I backed it. And if it comes yeah. out digitally before it comes out physically, then I'm a bit annoyed about that. Yeah, that really that really womps. Well, at least they're given um they're given everyone Steam codes, unless you don't have like a an an Epic uh, gamer PC. No, it's a Wii U game, so it's. Yeah. I didn't kickstart it. Uh, that's because I, I I did buy it on the Wii U when it came out on the Wii U, and I've got too many games to be playing right now that I can't be replaying the wonderful one hundred and one. <laughs> I'm curious how they've. Uh, Data stuff. I mean, I didn't. I I did use the touch screen some po- points, but I actually also used the right analog stick a lot more, so it wouldn't be that jarring of a difference for me if I was to play it on the Switch. Uh, but I wonder if um, wondering what other stuff they've done to it. If, if there are any other quality of life improvements. I remember the first half of that game being slightly a bit of a slog, but the, then the second half of that game being amazing. <laughs> I'm really curious what they've done with this new version. I'm, what the perception will be. I never got to play it um, on the Wii U. I think if I did, I played a small demo of it. That's the reason why I was actually so keen to get it on the Switch. I saw it in a secondhand retailer over here that I was I was very tempted to pick it up, and then I didn't. And then about the week after that, the um, the Kickstarter campaign went up. So I'm really glad that you know I didn't pick it up on Wii U in that sense because. I'd have to trudge out the Wii U, and I can only imagine the loading times on there would be quite slow as well. So hopefully that's one thing that might have improved if there were, were loading times. The one thing I can't stand are really long loading times. <laughs> and then, well, what's this about Sonic being delayed? <laughs> oh, right. So um, uh, the reason I threw this on the agenda was because it was actually a conversation uh, Neil and I sort of segued into it during our discussion yesterday uh, that I then ended up cutting from the discussion because I realized how completely irrelevant it was about anything. But I thought we could re-bring it up here while we have Neil on. Uh, it was something he reminded me um, that... And then I sort of realized, so we obviously have Mario's 35th anniversary rumors going about and all this, but Sonic's, it's also Sonic's anniversary this year. And there was, they were making this big hullabaloo about um, doing, a t- you know, the Sonic, Sonic 2020, Sonic 2020 games. Uh, we're going to make an announcement on the 20th of every single month. And they, that, that, they announced that in January and then February's announcement was the Sonic 2 Ages stuff. Uh, with a, supposedly a major announcement happening in March that then got cancelled because of this and pushed back to April, but then that got cancelled as well, and it's just been pushed back indefinitely. And I, we completely forgot about it um, entirely. But, Trust me, um, I, I, I have never forgot about this. I'm a, I'm a big Sonic fan, and <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been pushing my contacts at Sega just to keep telling, because they told me something was going to happen in March, uh, you know, back in January. Um, yeah. They didn't necessarily say it was Sonic related. I just assumed it was, <laughs> um, but you know, n- then nothing happened. And honestly, the twentieth of the month came along, and I went to some of my friends who who troll, you know, the the Sonic fan sites and stuff. I said, "What what's come out today? I haven't seen anything on the Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter or, or Sega's Twitter. You know, what's happened?" And then it was like a soundtrack release for the movie or a soundtrack, some sort of special tracks thirty F anniversary soundtrack, which I still can't find. By the way, I, I think it's on Spotify, but I can't find it anywhere. Um, and you know it's uh yes it's it's true it's actually not 30 this year it's 30 next year in 2021 but we were hoping that for the 30th anniversary there would be a, an announcement for a release gearing up until the end of the year and it's surprising that nothing came out for the movie either um you know i, I that the end credits spoilers here the end credits for the sonic movie features a 2d side scrolling 16 bit styled uh sonic running through the movie narrative and plot and i was thinking that would be a brilliant game just to put in the mania uh, engine and just have you know a sonic 20 or sonic the hedgehog movie game but alas that did not happen yeah it's the fact that like Sonic hasn't had a mainline game since forces which i think is 2018 and it seemed like they were all gearing up it's 2017 yeah, yeah. i thought it was 2017 even, even i guess older. i was is like so it's clearly they were gearing up for their next major game this year that's just been indefinitely held off so i was just one i was wondering like 
are we uh, uh, so obviously that will get announced at some point but when is it still going to be set for this year was it ever set for this year if next year was actually the 30th anniversary of sonic 2021 like what's happening what's happening with that because i can't imagine it's another mania game simply because the, the team that made sonic mania are actually making their own kickstarter project because they, I think they approached Sega potentially on making a Mania 2, and Sega just weren't interested, despite the fact it's like the best selling, best rated Sonic game <laughs> from the last like decade. It's bizarre to me. I mean, Sonic, uh, Sonic Mania is by far probably one of my most favorite Sonic games of all time. I, I do like the 3D Sonics, I don't want people to think I don't. I thought Forces was good in, in certain parts. But when Forces was announced, Forces was announced, like I think, about a good year in advance, right? Or about a good 10, 10 months. I said like a year and a half in advance when it was announced. It was announced at that Sonic Festival, wasn't it? Yeah. It was the same place they announced Mania? It was one of the first Nintendo Switch games sort of announced, I'm fairly certain. It was wasn't announced for Switch first, if I remember, right? It was announced only as PS4 and Xbox One, and then got announced for Switch later down they, the line. They announced... Uh... Forces and it was for NX. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how old it was. This. Mm. Yeah, there's Sonic stuff just being completely gone <laughs> right now. Oh, the Kickstarter project was cancelled until further notice, apparently. Rip. Well, Maybe single one is... Batman was like, please actually make Mania 2. <laughs> What what would everybody want though? If if Sonic was to get a release for twenty twenty one, would we want a compilation maybe of the three D games? I just want we... generations ported. Thank you. <laughs> I would I would like to see. But this is going back to the Sega thing. I just want to see more Dreamcast and Saturn games and stuff ported to the Switch, so that I can experience them again. Because I really enjoyed that on the um, it was the Xbox three hundred and sixty where I finally got to play Knights and Jet Set Radio. And so I want to sort of do that again, but like they've obviously they've got Panzer Dragoon and they ported Super Monkey Ball over, even if it was Banana Blitz. But I want to I want to see more games like that, and I'd like to see some of the 3D Sonic games ported over, at least Generations Unleashed, the two adventure games and Heroes at the very least. I oh, know you can keep you can keep Heroes well. out. I want to see Heroes. <laughs> it has uh, fans. It has its fans. That's I want Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> Matt would agree with you there. If Matt was here, he'd he'd scream and holler and be like, "Yes!" In that, that, in that squealy voice of his. <laughs> Matt would want Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> oh, Matt would want Shadow the Hedgehog so I, so bad. I just remember having uh, the Sonic Mega Collection on the GameCube it being one of my favorite sort of collectionary games that that was there. And you know, I've got, I've gone back and got Sonic Jam, and I've got some of the other ones as well. The mm -hmm. one on the DS as well, which is terrible but sonic rush or sonic hedgehog Gen <laughs> sonic yeah, hedgehog it's, the, it's the first four sonic games well first three sonic games if you want to put it like that um yeah that one yeah i heard that one yeah <laughs> but it, it was good at the you know it was good just to have that at the time um you know it's definitely been superseded but the fact that we still haven't got sonic 3 and knuckles in any way shape or form on on most of the modern consoles apart from steam um there's so much that Sega could do. I just kind of wonder what they would do. You know, if they if they did that for their anniversary, I think they did it for the ten, Sonic's tenth anniversary. Was it the Sonic Mega Collection? Um, Maybe it yeah. came out more. I really, I really so, hope yeah. that rumor about the reason why they can't re-release Sonic Three and Knuckles is because everyone noticed the Michael Jackson collect like connection. I hope that's not true because, like, if they have to re-release Sonic Three and Knuckles with like the beta soundtrack that's well sucks. there's the pc there's the pc audio right like, yeah no so... that, that's that's what that is the uh the beta yeah. soundtrack is the the pc soundtrack but like the the michael jackson one's better what, what's, <laughs> what's the version that's on steam then it must be that version i'm guessing it's not the michael jackson because the, the one on no, steam it is, is, the, it, is the, it is like the original rom it's just it's the sonic 3 and knuckles rom <laughs> with the, the mj music it is it is bizarre and they had no problem. They had no problem releasing it up until like the uh, the the 360, and then after that, it just like just went away. No one ever released it. Yeah. Yeah. Need to play Sonic yeah. Three and Knuckles as uh, one thing together. I played them both separately. I actually own them as physical carts of the Mega Drive. I just 
don't ever play my Mega Drive, <laughs> so it don't get ever played. It is weird. You think they would do more with Sonic because he's the mascot? It's also really strange because Sonic actually like isn't Sega's best-selling series, unlike like Mario with Nintendo. If you obviously don't count Pokemon because it's sort of its own thing. Like Sonic's, like what, like the, I think it's like the third or fourth best-selling Sega series. For them, Puyo Puyo apparently sells more than Sonic the Hedgehog does. Yo, someone, really uh, <laughs> someone, someone, uh, hot corrected me in chat and said that it was actually the uh, the Jetsons keyboardist, which I'm, I'm uh, Brad Buxer. I, I'm aware he's like he was like one of Michael Jackson's composers. That's the reason why. Uh, the Knuckles theme is in Blood on the Dance Floor, which is very yeah. weird. It's very <laughs> weird. Um, thanks, Brad Buxer. You are a gem. <laughs> I'm actually, like, the more I think about it, like, the, the Sonic 3 thing is really off topic, but, like, the Sonic 3 thing is really interesting because nowadays I'm starting to believe that Sega just put that stuff in the final game and just hope no one noticed. <laughs> like, like, that's the only, like explanation i have because they had an entire soundtrack ready to go and then they have brad buxer and michael jackson come and do like half the tracks and they were like wow this genesis sound chip kind of sucks we're out of we're out of here <laughs> and then and then like what did sega just go like yeah but like it, it's badass anyway like just keep it in and maybe no one will notice that the fucking glass sample from jam is in sonic 3 it's like <laughs> I mean, on no one knew it for a while. <laughs> on the other side, though, you know, it, it could be the case where they could be just trying to hype it up forever and ever. That the one day they do drop it, everyone's going to go crazy for it, just like Mother Three. You know, I think one day Sega is going to turn around and say, "We're going to put it on all modern systems," and people are going to absolutely just lose it. I reckon. Sega really Ages, just, like just yeah, do the Sega, Sega Ages yeah. thing. Really strange with Sonic Three because like they wouldn't even let um, what's it, Taxman um, do a whatever, little like modern updated version. Yeah, do yeah. a modern update for Sonic Three, like they let him do it for Sonic One, Two, and CD. <laughs> I, I mean, Every I appreciate the Sega Ages stuff. I think it's great, but as I said before, some of it makes no sense to me because they 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 announced Sonic Two for Ages like in 2018. And they were mm. like, yeah, it's going to have, like, cut content in it that we couldn't do on the Genesis. And then it came out, and that wasn't there. It was just Sonic 2 with a drop dash. Yeah, like, the drop what? dash was the <laughs> like, what, like, what is this? <laughs> I, I think it was really easy to refine and add to those games uh, from earlier on. But if if we were looking for Sega to, to do a, a 30th anniversary of something, like how Nintendo might be doing with Mario's 35th, Say, for example, Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2. These games, you know, they're, they're really endearing. I don't want to be negative. They're, they are really endearing, but there are things in them that, that will irk gamers today. You know, there's that, the, the lip syncing, for example, you know, and the, and the audio, that, that needs to be polished up. And that's a small thing, I know. But some of the control schemes, some of the camera jarring, it, it, it can get really annoying. I love playing through those games, by the way. You know, I've got my Dreamcast set up. I've got my GameCube set up. I'd love it. I just wonder how people would find those games today now if that was their first time of playing it. I don't think they'll be impressed. <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. Okay. But I feel like if they're, they're aimed at us who've uh, played it and are willing to play them again because <laughs> we uh, really... Uh, I would still buy it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think really I would do. buy the Sonic Adventure games again if they re-release them on Switch. Play I don't know. Thing. There's like there's like people nowadays who say that Sonic Adventure One controls better than Mario sixty four, and I don't I don't understand. Yeah, that, that is not true. That is not true Andrew. in the slightest. It's not shaped by Andrew by any shape of the. But um, yeah, Sonic I don't know. One does I mean, not control like, well. But I still like it. <laughs> I think Mario sixty four DS controls better with the thumb strap than <laughs> Sonic Adventure does. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I, I, I made a tweet about how uh, I can finally play Mario 64 on a DS because I could play Super Mario 64, like, emulated. And mm. everyone was like, Mario 64 DS is better, though, which is not true. Um, <laughs> but I went back and tried it again anyway, even though I've played through that game, like, one and a half times. And, like, it, the touch controls don't like they scale up 
So, so okay. here's what I mean by that. You know how like the DS normally has a really tiny screen. Yeah. But you can buy a DS with a big screen. Hmm. Yeah, that scales up the touch controls in Mario 64. So if you want to like actually do anything other than walking, you have to move your thumb like across the entirety of the the 2DS XL <laughs> bottom screen. Oh no. <laughs> and it feels so bad. It's like it's like if they released the Xbox 360 XL and the controller was literally just a 360 controller that's twice the size with like a bigger <laughs> analog stick that just took more travel to move. It's so awful. I hate Mario 64 DS so much. It's so stinky. Um, Hopefully it gets remade in the 35th anniversary one. Yeah. All, problem fixed. <laughs> all I'm saying is all I want out of a new Mar uh, Mario, all I wanted out of a new Sonic game is um, no gimmicks. Can we, can we stop this? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, that's the thing about Forces, right? If it didn't have the Avatar player, I think I would have enjoyed it a bit more. I feel like right. I can I say think, that about I think every... the Avatar player is alright, it just it, the level design in that game is garbo. The sort of, somehow they made the classic Sonic levels worse in this game than they were in Sonic I feel like that's just been my general issue with, with every single Sonic game since unleashed has just been there's just some stupid gimmick that holds the game back because it's like unleashed is a great game without awesome. the nighttime sections <laughs> like generations is great but the physics could be better uh but generations also i think, perfect. I think generations so that, that gets a is, slide. i think generations is fine yeah i think uh, sonic, lost world could be good without the wisps forces I think would be good, good. Without the 2D segments, and the Avatar segments, and the Wisps. Why do we keep bringing back the Wisps? Leave them, <laughs> leave them alone. Keep them in, keep them in, uh, the, the, the Wii one that the name escapes. Colors. The colors. The, leave the, the them one in there. that is actually good. Yeah, <laughs> Sonic, it's like... Sonic Colors is a really, is a really good one, and then Generations was good, and then they just dropped the ball. I think everything in Lost World doesn't work. I mean, I'm sure, like, like the big fear is they don't want to make a game that's solely boost mode because it would be over in, like, two hours, but, like, I don't know, like, it... I, I think doing what they did with Sonic Forces, having the three different playstyles, is fine, because they've done that plenty of times in the past. Like, it worked for them in stuff like Sonic Adventure. It's yeah. just that they it don't feel good. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> like, the boost sections are fine, Except they're over in like twenty worse. seconds. Yeah. They somehow made the two D sections significantly worse oh, than they were so in the previous bad. games. Classic Sonic and then the is so bad. Avatar section is an alright idea that's just not executed well from controls and level design perspective. Like I, I think it's a, it's a good it's what they should do have the three things, but maybe don't make them all Sonics or just the Avatar, and maybe like make them play well. <laughs> The, the, the Avatar set, oh my god, like, the Wisps completely break the Avatar sections, because you can just, yeah. like, get that one that allows you to skip over the level. I think I think the Wisps should be gone by now. <laughs> I, I don't so think Sonic should have power They're up. They're so <laughs> unnecessary. I think there's, you know, this might be one of the longest periods of time that I'm aware of without a new Sonic game. Um, I, can't think, I can't think of a time where, you know, three... Over three years have gone by now, or, or nearly three years. I guess if if it was twenty seventeen, the end of twenty seventeen, when um, Forces came out, I I can't think of a three year period where we didn't have a brand new Sonic game. And I, I don't count, you know, All Stars Racer, uh, Team Racing, or whatever it was. Yeah, like um, a proper Sonic game. It depends if whether or not you count Sonic Boom, I suppose. Was Lost World came out in twenty thirteen, and then the next one from Sonic Sake was Sonic Forces. Uh, from Sega, and that was a four years, but Sonic Boom came out in 2014, just after that. So, yeah. if you don't, if you count Sonic Boom, then the difference between Sonic Boom and then Sonic Forces is the same that we're currently in now. If you don't did, count did, Sonic Boom, that was technically longer. Did Mania not come out before Forces? Oh, I'm going crazy now. Yeah, Mania did come out before Forces, but they both came out in 2017. So, ah, uh, right, okay. Basically, the same thing. You should count Sonic Dreams Collection in 2015. In which case, then there's a well, <laughs> well, as Phantom <laughs> as Phantom brought up, everyone's favorite game, uh, Team Sonic Racing, came out. 
last year. Yeah, don't count that. <laughs> I don't, I mean, it, you know, it, it's it's an okay game. It's fine for what it is, and you know, I, as it's a budget I, game. I don't. Like so that's it another one of those weird ass situations where I don't get it because everyone really likes Sonic um, All Stars Racing Transformed, and it's the same developers making a similar it. game just with only Sonic characters, and they somehow made it worse. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's Super Digital. Like, like, get the team gimmick thrown onto it sure like the, why does it just feel worse to drive in this game why does it have less content than a game made in yeah. 2012 but like this is this is unrelated but like sumo digital the developer announced that they have like 21 games in the works right now like what the shit uh I, it's like a big what? Like, because they were, I thought they were going off to do their own thing. They released Snake Pass and stuff like their own title, and then apparently did a port of Mortal Kombat 11, and then also worked with Xbox with Crackdown 3. And then, like, like I'm just looking at their their discography right now, and it's ridiculous because following Simo Snake Digital. Pass, two Simo Forza Digital. games, Hitman 2, Crackdown 3, Mortal Kombat 11, Team Sonic Racing. They did the Switch port of Payday 2, and that's the reason why Payday 2 hasn't been updated, because they've been busy making every other game ever <laughs> to update it. <laughs> Getting out way too much it, it stuff. Hurts. It hurts so bad. I, I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> Team Sonic Racing stuff, though, I feel like Sega just like gave them a year and was like, we need a Sonic game. Uh, people like the last racing game. Let's just make, make them make another one uh, <laughs> with the Sonic IP. I just want it transformed HD, like, like bros. Yeah. Like, I just I don't need to play transformed. I want more Sega crossover stuff. I've been on a real Sega kick. Re release an updated version of Fighters Mega Mix, oh, but put like yeah. Kiryu from Yakuza in it. Maybe throw Joker from Persona in it because you gotta have some sort of Persona nonsense nowadays. Put put Puyo Puyo in it now that it's officially confirmed by Sega to be more popular than Sonic. Let's just do this. <laughs> I, I just think that Sonic does carry over a massive, massive chunk of so many older gamers. I think people, despite the fact that, you know, some of the last games have been a bit poor, with Mania being the exception, I think people will still, you know, perk their eyes up looking at a Sonic game. You know, with the movie coming out and being so popular, I think... I just don't understand why Sega weren't there, ready to capitalize with a couple of brand new games coming out, a, a bit more content. Or, you know, I know maybe that's what their plans were this year until everything happened. It just it strikes me as bizarre. Maybe they just thought the movie was going to tank. Um, well, yeah, I think would have. <laughs> uh, Sega originally were very hands off with the movie, and it was only after the big backlash from fans and stuff that Sega decided actually we should get involved and fix this. So I, yeah. I kind of get it, but at the same time, you get in situations where Sega are being handed Sonic's success on a silver platter because of outside means or other people or the fans keeping Sonic alive, and then they just completely fail to capitalize on it or completely butcher their chance. Like, how many chances have Sega been given to make a really good Sonic game and get lo lots of people really happy? And then they, because of something happening like Sonic Mania or the Sonic movie, and then Sega just completely dropped the ball. It, it, it strikes me as bizarre. I, I just don't understand. I know we had Sonic Mania Plus in the physical version and the DLC with Mighty and Ray. Absolutely great. Yeah, I, I just don't understand why they didn't keep that team around. And I, I, I know there's probably some internal politics with some of the people that worked on that game. But it's I don't really... understand why they didn't keep that team around to make a sequel put amy in there put a few others in there and you could have had a, a top selling game it's really funny because like all i want out of a new sonic game is for them to play it like as extremely safe as possible like it's it's just like it's the only franchise where i'm like no 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 you don't have to do anything new just like take what already works and just like keep going yeah, refine it and do that <laughs> because like I, I feel like the biggest tragedy of all of the 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 bad sonic games as of late is isn't even the fact that they're bad it's that like if they had made a sequel like that just fixed the that like focused on the issues of the previous game and then worked on it like 
Unleashed 2 could have probably been a great game because the nighttime sections are bad, but they could have, you know, taken the criticisms of that and, and you know, worked on Aesthetic. making them run good. Or, like, the same thing... I, I think, like, even Jim Sterling made, like, a really big point about that with Lost World where he's like, I don't like Lost World, but if I would be really excited for a Lost World 2 because now that they've, like, been given a game to try that out, like, they should... Like, I like the concepts. I think everyone enjoys the concepts. They should work on, you know kind of smoothing those should. out and they just they just don't do that even 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 forces was like like had so much like uh, feature creep and it's like stop like unless yeah. you're like just make take a previous game double down on it and like focus on that being like the best possible version of that there's only something really weird with sega just constantly making new engines for these games to run on as well yeah. Like they made the Hedgehog engine, which is what Unleashed and Generations ran on, and everyone really enjoyed it. And then they made the Hedgehog engine too, and it's significantly inferior. I can't really see any reason why they needed to make a new engine for it. I mean, there might be some reasons from that I'm just not aware of. But it's, just, I, it's, it's just it's just how I don't understand. How do you make the successor to your previous engine and make it somehow <laughs> the new, the new, uh, the new Sakura Wars runs on Hedgehog Engine Two, which is really weird. <laughs> the Straight. last time I remember Sega kind of really doing that with Sonic would have been the Storybook games for the Wii. They probably all ran on a very similar engine, and they just yeah. you know... those two were games were good. Oh. <laughs> like, the, both of them games worked. They're significantly better than the their HD equivalent, like the whatever was being released on other platforms at the time. So yeah. It is zero G and uh, uh, Sonic O six. Which I, in, in itself that could be up for a remake as well. You never know. I mean, if I, 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 I don't really want to get into Sonic O six. Sonic, I, I want to remake Sonic the Fight. Good game. People should give it more credit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was uh, just. Uh, I don't know. This is just. This is just oh. do it. We've got just under half an hour left. Why don't we talk about the thing that's on the thumbnail? Uh, what you want to talk about, call them the, the spicy oh. leaks, spicy hardware leaks. I'll uh, do I'll do like the most abbreviated version because I'm I'm actually not uh too like one hundred percent super crazy into all the details because there's just been so much coming out. Hmm. Uh, but basically, some somehow somewhere. Uh, some 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 hackers, some cool boy hackers, got into uh, uh Nintendo's like source development kits for the N sixty four, the GameCube, and the Wii, and it includes like, which is funny because I I always thought that stuff was already public because like people can just buy old SGI Onyx software and it's just like it's on it. Um, but no, like, apparently, like, as compared to just, like, a general SDK being released, like, this includes, like, some real, um, deep, deep-seated stuff, like, it's, it's, like, schematics for the, the, the boards, and, uh, there's, like, test software, and, um, all that kind of stuff. As I said, right now, there's, like, it's, it's very, uh, surface level. Um, but the implications are are pretty massive because like this could lead to people making like one one hardware clones of of the N sixty four and the GameCube and the Wii. Like we could see we could see like Hyperkin making like a N sixty four clone console that's not emulation based. <laughs> um, and there's just like like so far like we've just been seeing like um test games, uh, you know, all that, all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's a MIDI of Hotel California in there, which is my favorite part, <laughs> is, uh, for the sound font testing, they, uh, they, they, they have a little MIDI of Hotel California they can just swap out the, um, the instruments with. Um, mm -hmm. apparently they've also found, like, like, Nintendo's official Game Boy emulator, like, some demos from Space World, um, it's a pretty crazy amount of stuff, and apparently there there might be more coming. Yeah. I think from what I've understood, the people who hacked it have been arrested for it, from what I understand. I have, I have no idea. 
like I think it was the same the same guy who also hacked into Microsoft servers and took a bunch of stuff from them, who has already like pleaded guilty to it oh, no. and has been arrested. But all of this stuff, I mean, he obviously then passed it around to people. So they don't Nintendo and Microsoft don't know where it all is. <laughs> And so we're starting to see more and more of it come out now, now. Because, like, the first thing that came out was, like, three gigs in size, but apparently the full leak is, like, two terabytes. Which is which is really leaving a lot of people to wondering, like, what the hell could possibly be in it. Yeah. Because, like, we, we like, like, of course what many people are thinking is, like, oh, we're going to see, like, unreleased betas and, and cancelled mm -hmm. games and stuff. Which, I don't know if I'd put credence into that, but, like, Considering that we are seeing like test software and test games and and demos coming out, like maybe. I think younger viewers will, or younger listeners might not understand that two terabytes of data from from the nineties and the early noughties is a significant amount of data. Yeah, a, a lot of these games used to run on a couple of megabytes, so you know, or a, you know, a few a fair few megabytes on the Super Nintendo, and then it goes up. But two terabytes of stuff. That there's a gold mine in there, so oh. I mean, most mm. like hard drives and desktop computers in the late '90s were like 40 gigs at most. So, so mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's a lot. That's a lot of resources, and um, I'm I'm living for it, but it's it's gonna be rough. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's 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 a situation where, like, I I I it's gonna be rough. For a company like Nintendo that is as con confidential and loves to uh, never release older materials ever. But I feel like some of the stuff like N64 and Wii schematics, like, that's just like, you know, at, at this point, outside of people making clone consoles, there's, there's really like not much else to it. Yeah. Maybe emulation will get a little bit better, but that's, you know. The, the thing that I've, um, been most interested about it from it based off of the reset error uh, thread that put everything together was that like um there's supposedly like a complete list for nintendo i think it was it nintendo 64 or ds give me one second to check what yeah so like internal list that list everything released including unreleased stuff for all nintendo systems up until the ds yeah it's really interesting to me because I want to know the unreleased ones. Because if this is a list of games that every list of games that at least Nintendo releasing from yes downwards, including unreleased games, what sort of games are they working on? We don't know about might be on this list. Uh, according right. to uh, Satya, he said that this is from a a leak in a or a hack in 2018 that was like. Connecting to the IQ server, which if you don't know if, what IQ is, it was like um, yeah. Nintendo's kind of China branch where they, they had released like a few of their consoles under a, a brand called IQ in uh, China just to, you know, sell the N64. And uh, apparently that's connected to a larger Nintendo server where they were able to pull a bunch of stuff. But that's why the current leaks have a lot of like IQ related data in them. Mm hmm. But yeah, uh, I'm yeah. very, I'm very curious. Like, cause, cause I, 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 I'm also really curious because I, I, I've been kind of digging into the N64 a lot more lately, and like, I think it is genuinely one of Nintendo's most, um, just interesting periods. Mm -hmm. Because it's their, it's their, uh, it's their jump into 3D, and like, you can, I mean, if you watch like any Space World footage, like, games were radically different when they whoa games were yeah, not were, something ever. <laughs> games were radically different when they started development to the point before like they they ended development like you know Zelda 64 and stuff like that mm. and um that's that's going to be weird like if I don't I don't want to sit here and be like yeah bros we're we're getting mother 64 but like <laughs> We want to see like actual clean footage of that game. Yeah, it is. It is, again, it is weird when when you hear the the two terabytes thing. You really have to wonder like, is that really all just development stuff, or is that actually including like stuff mm. that people have been clamoring to see for for decades now? There's a, there's a bunch of stuff that I would like to see. You know, from the Space World 
two thousand, you know, we had the Link fighting Ganon, or you had the mm. Metroid Prime sort of teaser thing. There, I don't know if there was running in any sort of engines or if that was just sort of mocked up videos. Mario one hundred twenty eight. Yeah, all of those um, tech yeah. demos like that, and the um, uh, what what is that? What was it called? Where it had like a it had like the proto Mies on it, and it had like a Wada on like a stage singing. Oh. Yeah, what is that called? It's a Nintendo 64 game, isn't it? Yeah, it was well, a Nintendo started, 64 game. It started game, as an N64 it? game and then Yeah. And then was uh moved to GameCube at one point. Yeah, it was a DD game, I'm fairly certain. Um oh, but I can't I, the name kind of escapes me now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh I don't remember. <laughs> but you know, the, this information might be exciting for people who if if they can get some nuggets, you know, the N64 must have been quite difficult architecture to develop for. And if it helps homebrewers or people create N64-like games, you never know when the N64 mini might come out. Um, I if think, someone I can think, hack that, then we could put those new ROMs on there. Oh. I think that's that's mm. right now the thing I'm most interested in is I, I I would really love to see people like shrink the N64 and the GameCube and the Wii hardware. People have been able to shrink the Wii hardware and it is incredible. Like, uh, let me let me uh find specifically the video I was I was watching. Um, but there is a uh, there is a guy who is actually selling kits on on how to make this. Um, oh my God, where 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 is it? Where is it? I need to I need to uh, I need to find um. <laughs> where is it? Uh, the, you, okay, you okay. Shank, Shank mods, and he has a a uh, Wii GameCube portable DIY kit that you can Hello, buy, and it literally just consists of like oh, a little bit of the audio just played. Because uh, I want to show you, like, this guy plus a bunch of other people um, have found out the way how to like take the Wii motherboard and just like chop it down to the most like bare like essential components and just like put it into, like, a handheld, like, Game Boy-sized uh, piece of hardware. And um, it's, it's like, they could do that. They could do that even further with, like, FPGAs, and they could do that finally with the N64, and um, it'll, uh, it'll be nuts. I'm going to include links in chat here. You just can't replicate the amazing N64 controller. I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> Uh, because man, a week ago when I did that, that 3DS N64 emulation thing and like, I had GoldenEye running like almost full speed. I was like, this is what I want. Like I want, I want portable GoldenEye. I want portable Perfect Dark. I want portable Turok. I think a lot of European players would suck at playing these games in 60 Hertz. I don't know about you. But you know, I I I remember playing Goldeneye, and it was it was very choppy. Perfect Dark was very choppy, even with the expansion pack. Uh, you know, we had that situation over here where we had those fifty hertz games. Um, probably why going back to that Sega Genesis collection discussion. Uh, you know, I didn't think they were that bad. Probably because I'm so used to slow ROMs, um, more slow versions of those games. It'd be very interesting to see if something like that you know, people could clean up some N64 games and somehow put them online. I'm sure they have already, but um, this might aid them a bit better with yeah. certain games, for sure. Mm. Oh. <sighs> it's also just going to be so interesting to see... I mean, like, it's it's funny, because, like, the, the GameCube and the Wii have already been, like, reverse-engineered to hell and back. I mean, like, I remember, like... Dolphin was already playing back brand new Wii games at full speed, like the day after they would come out. Um, because it, it's like it's just like incredible how uh, you know, it's like how how open I well not open just like uh how easy to trace that hardware now that we have even more information on it. It's it's just like like what what will people be able to do? It's gonna be nuts. Hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, and I am wondering what other if we'll start seeing more and more stuff coming down because you, you have to assume Nintendo's like cracking down 
oh, trying absolutely. to get us all of this stuff. But absolutely. So I have to wonder how if we're going to see any more, how much is going to come out, what 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 is happening. <laughs> Like it's going, it's going to be an interesting. Will we not get anything for another few weeks? Because obviously we had all the Pokemon stuff from like a week or so ago, and now all of this stuff suddenly happening. It's yeah. almost like all these leaks are coming out now because nothing else is. <laughs> I mean, for t- uh, two terabytes of stuff, like they're going to have to find something to even post that on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, to address one of Phantom's comments from before, uh, he was like. Um, Will people be able to write about this and record it if it's illegal stuff? And yeah, I mean, of course they will. Like, it, pe- pe- people are going to be keeping this information now that it's live onto the internet. Nintendo obviously want to crack down; they want to get their source code back and ideally have that removed. But the information people are going to lean from that, the stuff that the people are going to be writing about, like the cutting room floor, could have a field day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on that. So there's so much stuff that that is going to be included. No one will that beta game they had, that mirror one or whatever, where you play as some like random kid running through a maze. Yes, like that's going to be. No people aren't going to forget about that. (laughs) So once it's on the internet, people, then it's yeah, it's it's there. It's there forever. Yeah, it'll be recorded and it'll be part of history now of Nintendo's history and people will know about it and I don't think there's uh, there's, there's not really anything Nintendo can do to it's stop kinda that like that, uh, that certain post-apocalyptic zombie game that had a, a, a little bit of a you know um, yeah a spoil, whatever, whatever, whatever game that is yeah whatever uh... game that is uh, it's like some obscure franchise but uh, it got leaked hmm. recently and um, it uh, you know they're the console manufacturer is DMCAing now, but like in a year, they, they'll probably stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, once I the mean, game comes out, <laughs> I, I wonder if they'll have the original Smash Brothers '64 sort of dev kit where the, you know they were all still polygons. They weren't, you know. They oh, the they found, they found the uh, they found the melee cafe. Yeah, the melee cafe is um, <laughs> the melee cafe is, is, is a the test league. image in the sixty-four SDK. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> maybe maybe it's the GameCube one specifically. Like it's literally the, the exact same background. I was lo- looking, watching a video of it, being like, "Get this. Well, this you, is it." If this... you uh, if you dig deep into like the N sixty-four test software, not even not even like from this leak, but like from you know what's been publicly available years ago, um. It, it had like a ton of N64 strings on it. It seems like they carried over a lot from the N64 over to the uh, the GameCube. Yeah. So we can sort of getting up to the two hour mark, which means we can probably start right now. But Phantom actually asked a question uh, of us. Uh, he wants to know what our thoughts are on linear games, specifically because like people tend to note that a game being linear is a bad thing. But is that because of the lack of options and exploring the, or the narrative of a world? Because you could argue Final Fantasy VII Remake is linear, but it's not bad. Does it depend on the journey to get there that makes the linearity bad? Or is it the idea of something being linear in general that makes it bad? Um, I, I guess a, a better example than Final Fantasy VII Remake would be like Final Fantasy XIII, I suppose, considering the first 30 hours of that game are completely linear before it then suddenly becomes open world. For the for the final act, I don't think um, linear I, I, is bad. I just like it, it, it. I think it just depends on the style of game. Yeah, I think it for like the reason people didn't like it with Final Fantasy thirteen is because Final Fantasy games are meant to sort of be much more open world, linear. Like you can go anywhere, and it's the same. Final Fantasy seven R technically doesn't open up until I think chapter fourteen. Where the game this lets you go anywhere across Midgar at that point and could do, do any of the side stuff you missed, but also like it, people would argue it's linear because it's chapter based and you're moving from one place to another. But each of those chapters actually has stuff to do. Like when you meet Aerith in chapter five or six, I want to say there's like you can run around and do all of these. Oh no, actually it's chapter eight. It, when when you get chapter eight and you're in Aerith's town, you can do all of these side quests and stuff like that that are completely optional doing them gets you bonuses and stuff but you can do them now 
And I would argue that makes the game open, even if once you've done chapter eight, you don't get to go back there until like chapter fourteen, sort of thing. I, I think I, I think it really does depend on. Yeah, I'm I'm in this weird way. Like, I think the older I've got, the more I seem to prefer to play a linear based game because open, you know, open world's great. And I really loved games like Breath of the Wild, for example, and I'll, I'll definitely play through its sequel. I, I, there's very few games that I will play like that. When it comes to RPGs, they're long enough as it is. Um, <laughs> I, I guess you know it. It really does depend on the genre of the game because mm. if I find myself lost in a game, I don't have time to figure it out. I, I probably won't go back to it, and when I do go back to it, I'll forgot where I was and I'd probably give up straight away. Um, yeah, there there are certain games where I'm kind of like. When I was younger, I didn't like the idea of having a waypoint pointing me towards somewhere if it was an open world thing, for example. But now I'm kind of, I, I think games have become a lot more accessible where you can actually t- assist modes. You could turn on assist modes and stuff like that. I, I, you know, the Resident Evil games are quite linear in my mind. They're not mm. very, they're not very, and they're, they're good games. Uh, so. Yeah. But like, I, I mean, like, I think people would be really weirded out by a new Super Mario Brothers game that was open world <laughs> and not linear. Like platforming games like Sonic the Hedgehog, would they? Would, those are all linear. Like you I said, mean, Resident honestly, Evil, even strategy RPGs like Fire Emblem are technically all li- linear. Like people, people might try and make arguments for Three Houses because you can whatever mission art you're going on, but technically you're barreling towards the. Um, the end of the month, where then you have to do the story-based mission that it gives you <laughs> to advance to the next point. It's I'm sure, like, like I don't know if you'd call it open world. I'm sure, like not a lot of people would agree with me, but I feel like I feel like the the perfect example of something being like linear um, is something like the the Half Life games, because like like in essence, like the game does kind of just throw you down a bunch of like super kind of narrow paths to to get to your objectives. But, like, Mm. the areas themselves are open enough that you can kind of, like, even if there's nothing in it, like, you can kind of explore and they they, they feel like real, they feel less like game levels and more like real open actual, like, environments. Yeah. And that's, like, that's, like, perfect, in my opinion, because that's, like, it's, like, oh, this is, like, you know, a real place. Yeah, that's that's what Final Fantasy VII Remake is like, like... It's throwing you down certain pathways, but there are things, side things here and there that you can go off people you can talk to, start side quests. It's not like Skyrim. And like all, all, all to be fair, like I think I feel like all Final Fantasy games are like that. I don't think I've, they, they might seem open world, but I don't think I've, haven't, I've played a Final Fantasy game where they're not just sending you from location A to location B and using stuff to block off. Like Final Fantasy VI, makes you go onto a world map which looks very big but all you can really do at that start is walk down from the city at the top to the desert castle below because if you try and go anywhere else you're just blocked off yeah i, I guess exactly you got, open. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess you got the opposite in, in things like death stranding you know people I, people seem to live and die by this game i'm not quite sure why but you know that is that is waypoint to waypoint really and yeah it might be a few mm-hmm. things in between but like, then that becomes far too boring so um you know, I'm just looking at the comments here. You know about Mario has secret exits that lead to other worlds. So it's, it's not open world, but it's not point A to point B as well. And and that's right. You know, when I actually think of the 2D Mario games, like Super Mario World, you do have those secret worlds that you can go from one to the next. And yeah, it's not linear; it's an alternative route. And you know, the 3D Mario games they're quite sandboxy. So I quite like the idea of being able to run around Peach's Castle. Yeah, sure, mm. you're a bit restricted about as to where you can go but you do have three or four levels on each on each floor that you can go into um and then you can tackle each star is the way you want it um and odyssey had the same thing with the moons as well right so yeah i, 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 I think it's a li- i think it's a limited thing i think it's based on genre like so some genres get what can be more linear than others like metroidvanias by definition should be open world because the, the whole point is you're exploring an area to find the specific upgrade you need to keep continue exploring the area you, you you're going to be going around until you hit some kind of deadlock where you need the solution for but the fact that you can get get there's not that you're not being you're not being pushed around from place to place which ironically means that metroid prime 3 is not a very good metroidvania or a metroidvania at all because it's level based hmm. strangely enough but <laughs> 
other M just as bad, I guess, as well. Yeah, I but, suppose. But do you know what? The Fusion was pretty linear. Metroid Fusion. Yeah. That that literally told linear. you to go. Yeah, that, that literally told you to go from point A to point B. Do this and do that. There's very little backtracking, and and the backtracking that you did do was to find missiles and bombs and stuff like that. It wasn't anything too. I, big. I feel like I feel like Metroidvania might. I'd probably still consider a Metroidvania for the simple fact that. It still, you could still go off the beaten path to find those missiles and bombs as you were exploring, and you could still go into rooms. You like naturally discover the roadblocks instead of it being like an invisible wall or a door being shut that you can't get open. I think what stops it from being consistently open world is like the drunk old man argument. You see, like on Pokemon, where the very first Pokemon game where you're in Viridian City and you can't go north because there's a drunk old man. Or sorry, he needs his coffee in the Western versions. Lying, just lying in the middle of the road and can't move. And the only thing that gets him to move is by you going to somewhere else to trigger an event to then go back, as opposed to like it being a natural blockade. Like it's one thing if you have to go off to find a specific item to then be able to progress. There's another thing when you can't go here until the game tells you you can go here. I think that's what makes games linear. If it's blocking you off from going to places and basically basically being like, you can't go here because we're not allowing you to go here, rather than I can't go here because I don't have the necessary ability to go here. I'm not the necessarily high enough level to survive or I don't have the right weapon. That's the difference between well, them. That's, that's the difference. what I loved about Breath of the Wild, really. You know, Once you get out of that sort of tutorial, I guess, in the first, yeah. you know, first three shrines and stuff, that that game is purely open world, and you can go in any direction you want. You can pick up any weapon. You you know you could literally go and defeat Ganon. Yeah, right from the right that. And that that is a true definition of open world. They've definitely redefined it in my mind. Um, but you know, I like to mix things up between linear and open worlds. There's, I'd love to. I just love playing through Sonic, for example, and just and just rolling from from left to right, and mm -hmm. and having fun with that. So. Running around at the speed of sound. That's right. <laughs> Places to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, I think it's been two hours, pretty much. Uh, we've covered over everything we had on our um, schedule. So yeah. unless there's anything else either of you guys want to mention, I think it could be a good time to start wrapping this up. That's, that's all I got. Yep. Oh, yeah, Luigi's well, Mansion it. 3 DLC came out. Like, oh like, yeah! Like again, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. We need to play that. Broken. We need to. We need to do more. Um, uh, hotel terror mode or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, I need scraper. to. I, a scraper. Yeah. yeah. I need. I need to get more Nintendo DLC. I still haven't got Octo Octopath Octolink expansion or whatever it's called for Splatoon Two, which people are telling me is the best part of Splatoon Two. Do you know what? I think that might be a good thing to. You know, if everyone's itching to spend some money. <laughs> that you know they could be I, I haven't i haven't played it either um i've seen it at events and stuff um mm. but you know if if there's so much content on these some of these games that people you know if people are itching for games if they're running out of things to play you know go back and find some of those games that you haven't yet played you know things like astral chain for example i mean if someone hasn't bought that yet then then go out and find it and there's buy it there's also like this incredible back catalog of third party greatest hits that are continuously being released uh, but no one yeah. buys them cuz they're old but like it, it, if you're a Nintendo fan there's a likelihood you've never played them before and maybe you should yeah <laughs> so many good games out there that people can just go try out and the switch has way too many games yeah. so. <laughs> I, I i get it for some people right like when i was younger I I used to read magazines all the time to make sure that I knew what was coming out. And, you know, it would be often or not, I'd be standing in a newsagent waiting to, to to find a game that could be coming out in the next six months so I could put my pocket money towards it or, you know, my sort of small paperboy wages towards. And you know, for some people who have limited income or limited money to spend on games, they don't necessarily want to to take the chance of, of finding a game that they don't want. So... You know, for some people, it is really important that they only buy the Mario games, that they only buy the Zelda games, because they're too afraid that if they invest in a game now, and then Nintendo go and say, oh, we're going to release Super Mario 64 HD or something in, in three months, you know, they, they're going to have to start saving up again, and they, they've spent money willy-nilly, so 
I, I get it for some people. And Nintendo need to be better at communicating if the, the, rather than shadow dropping some stuff. I don't think they do shadow drop <laughs> stuff. They, 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 they tend to give a long, a long enough lead time for people to get hyped about certain games. But I just think it's funny. Yeah. I mean, right now it feels like time has just stopped. And it's like, th- now is like the perfect backlog time. Because it's like, it, it, it just feels like for however long this will be, like, there's just going to be, like, chunks of nothing that you could just go back and finally catch up and feel like you're not missing out on anything new. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was their plan all along, just let everyone carry on investing into Animal Crossing and <laughs> and, and let them go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's mess up then. So thank you very much, Neil, for joining us once again for some source gaming content. <laughs> Absolutely. I love being here. It's good always to talk about Nintendo stuff. You know, yeah. hopefully Sonic fans don't get too annoyed <laughs> by, uh, <laughs> by some of our discussion. But, you know, it is great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Obviously, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be able to talk Nintendo and, and to, to hang out with you guys. This pleasure's all ours. Why don't you let the lovely people know where they can find you? Although I'm pretty sure I put some of them down below in the description. Yeah, like sure. Um, so I write reviews, I write articles and stuff for Cubed 3. You can find us at www.cubed3.com. Uh, you can find me at Flynn Neal on Twitter or at Cubed 3 on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, but, you know, we, we have so many reviews going up of so many other games as well not just nintendo switch games but games on pc xbox one ps4 so come over to us we've got loads of retro reviews loads of content uh, be sure to follow us on on social media as well but yeah it's it's you know hopefully i can join you guys again in the future uh, we can talk nintendo hopefully when maybe they do their next direct we can come back and say ah oh, they told us so. <laughs> well, next time Sega decides to talk about Sonic, you know, definitely get me on. Yeah, uh, going for the Sonic 2020. Yeah. <laughs> when it's finally announced. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening in and uh, commenting over in the chat there. As always, like, subscribe, as support us on Patreon, support us on Streamlabs randomly. Just do, do all of that lovely, lovely stuff. Find a a game that you haven't played yet from your vast back catalogue that I know everyone has, and just pick it and play it and see if it's actually good. See if it's something that you've been waiting on or something you just randomly picked up one day. You only have to play it for like 30 minutes, but do that and maybe you'll find a new game, like a new favourite that you didn't know you owned. That's my challenge for everyone this week. I'm not a teacher, so you don't have to do it but I want you to do it. So with that, always remember to return to the source. Yep. Have a good one, everybody. Take care.